Genesis, Jesus Christ is the breath of life. In Exodus, he is the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he is our high priest. In Numbers, he is a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he is a prophet like unto Moses. In Joshua, he is our captain of our salvation. In Judges, he is our judge and lawgiver. In Ruth, he is our kinsman redeemer. In 1st and 2nd Samuel, he is our trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, he is our reigning king. In Ezra and Nehemiah, he is a rebuilder of the broken down walls of human life. In Esther, he is our Mordecai. In Job, he is our ever living redeemer. In Psalms, he is our shepherd. In Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, he is our wisdom. In Songs of Solomon, he is our loving bridegroom. In Isaiah, he is the Prince of Peace. In Jeremiah, he is the righteous branch. In Lamentations, he is the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, he is the wonderful full faced man. In Daniel, he is the fourth man in life's fiery furnace. In Hosea, he is the faithful husband, forever married with backslider. In Joel, he is the baptizer of the Holy Ghost in fire. In Amos, he is our burden bearer. In Obadiah, he is the mighty to save. In Jonah, he is our great foreign missionary. In Micah, he is the messenger of beautiful feet. In Nahum, he is the avenger of God's elected. In Habakkuk, he is God's evangelist, crying, Revive thy work in the midst of thy years. In Zephaniah, he is our savior. In Haggai, he is the restorer of God's lost heritage. In Zechariah, he is the fountain opened up in the house of David for sin and uncleanliness. In Malachi, he is the son of righteousness, rising with healing in his wings. In Matthew, he is the king of the Jews. In Mark, he is the servant. In Luke, he is the son of man, feeling what you feel. In John, he is the son of God. In Acts, he is the savior of the world. In Romans, he is the righteousness of God. In 1 Corinthians, he is the rock that followed Israel. In 2 Corinthians, he is the triumphant one, giving victory. In Galateans, he is your liberty. He sets you free. In Ephesians, he is the head of the church. In Philippians, he is your joy. In Colossians, he is your completeness. In 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, he is your hope. In 1st Timothy, he is your faith. In 2 Timothy, he is your stability. In Titus, he is truth. In Philemon, he is your benefactor. In Hebrews, he is your perfection. In James, he is the power behind your faith. In 1 Peter, he is your example. In 2 Peter, he is your purity. In 1 John, he is your life. In 2 John, he is your pattern. In 3 John, he is your motivation. In Jude, he is the foundation of your faith. And in Revelation, he is your coming king. He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is the keeper of creation and the creator of all. He is the architect of the universe and the manager of all times. He always was, he always is, and he always will be. Unmoved, unchanged, undefeated, and never undone. He was bruised and brought healing. He was pierced and eased pain. He was persecuted and brought freedom. He was dead and brought life. He is risen and brings power. He lives and brings peace. The world can't understand him. The armies can't defeat him. The schools can't explain him and the leaders can't ignore him. Herod couldn't kill him and the Pharisees couldn't confuse him. The people couldn't hold him and Nero couldn't crush him. Hitler couldn't silence him and the New Age can't replace him. He is my Lord and He rules my life. He is my Lord and He 